How you doing? I'm Christopher James. I am here in Brooksville, Florida at the Grand Canyon course for Throw Down the Mountain 2017 put on by Discraft. This guy right here, if you're in the disc golf world, you know him. If you're not in the disc golf world, you should get in the disc golf world because this guy right here, four-time world champion, the one and only Paul McBeth. First of all, man, I met you the other day. It's an honor, man. Uh, I play this game as a hack. You know, I go out here and just have fun with it. And uh, following you around today was absolutely amazing. Watching some of the stuff you do, the precision, the timing. How did you get into this? And, and tell us a little bit about how you play because I was telling you earlier, like when you putt, you know, everything, you're so slow and methodical. And if I was filming you in slow motion, it would take an hour to watch the putt because you really put your heart and soul into it. Yeah, yeah. well, first off, thank you for having me. Um, disc golf, I mean, I discovered it early in life. Uh, my dad has played disc golf for, I'd say, about 30 something years now. But uh, I didn't really start playing until I was about 14, so 12 years ago. So I've been playing disc golf for quite a while now. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. My style, the longer I play, the like kind of, like I said, more methodical I've gotten. Just taking my time and putting all my focus into each shot, or at least trying to now. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's where I'm at right now in my career, and my career still you know, barely began. You know, it's funny, you know, you're saying that your career has barely began, yet you're a four time world champion already. Um, probably would have been five, but you got injured, you know, you missed a little time. Um, you know, and like I said, you know, you shot a 53 today, um, along with your teammate Nate, so it looks like you guys are going to be battle each other at the car tomorrow, which will be awesome. Um, what, what's the thing that you love about this so much that you're out here and you, you decided, you know what, I'm going to become a pro and do this for a living? Was, it, was well, it the thing with your dad or just once you got it? Yeah, I mean, I never knew there was professional disc golf at first when I started playing until I, you know, I started getting into tournaments and then I went, I traveled to a tournament and met a lot of new people. I was like, man, why, you're good. Why aren't you playing pro? So it kind of just like, you know, um, just felt, I just kind of fell into it. And yeah, I get, I get to play with Nate tomorrow, which will be fun. Uh, we don't get to play as often as we'd like to. I mean, we get to practice all, all the time, but we don't get to play tournaments as much as we'd like to. But it's getting there. It's getting there. You know, we're, we're getting on lead cards together. Uh, but uh, it, my favorite part about disc golf is traveling and seeing seeing familiar faces, meeting new people, and then being able to come to Florida like I am here now. Uh, after two, three, four years of not being here, and then just seeing everyone like, man, you've grown so much, or you know, seeing other people and uh, just familiar faces, and it's always awesome to go back to places you've been and just you know, rekindle friendships and things like that. Well, you know, and you've traveled around the world playing disc golf, you know, and it's probably a great way to see everything, you know, especially if you got a sponsor that's paying for you to go around the world. So, just in the United States, you know, this this course right here is unique for Florida because Florida's flat. This has terrain. I feel like I'm in Georgia. So, in comparison to some of the other courses around, where would you rate this course right here at the Grand Canyon? It's, I would put it at the top of Florida for sure. Um, but it is a temporary course, so it's it's really hard to judge temporary courses. But I would definitely. It reminds me of Northern California, honestly. I mean, the only difference is the Spanish moss. We don't have that. <laughs> you know, we don't have that in California, and especially Northern California. But if you were just to drop you drop someone off here, they would think they're in Northern California, um, playing playing almost like daylight, but with a lot more green. Nice. So you know, I also know I was talking to you earlier. You're an MMA fan, you know, and uh, I was talking with Ben Askren on Twitter. I told you earlier, and he's a fan of yours. So, would you ever, you know, challenge him to a disc golf game and then <laughs> let him take you to a wrestling match? Oh yeah, I would definitely go. go, go. <laughs> I don't know if I'd take Ben on in a wrestling match, but he could take me to a wrestling no, match. No, no, that's fine. If you're gonna if you're gonna bring him to your world and yeah. smoke his ass, mm -hmm. don't you think it's, it's fair to return the favor and let him, you know, take it, you in the ring? Exactly, it's only fair. I mean, I, <laughs> I would I would not say no to that opportunity. So, uh, Ben, if you're watching, um, but uh, yeah, Ben, I've talked to Ben quite a few times. I've seen him play <coughs> disc golf uh, back in Arizona, actually. Um, so I I've had some interactions with Ben before. And then, you know, seen some other MMA fighters, actually. We were talking about earlier. Stephen yeah. Wonderboy Thompson just yep. fought for the uh, welterweight title. He's yep. a disc golfer. You were yep. just in South Carolina. You said you didn't get a chance because he just got a, a loss, so he yeah. was kind of recovering. Um, what, what would you think about doing something like that where they did a pro-am with, pro, with uh, pro disc golfers and MMA fighters? That, you know, and maybe do it for charity. Maybe Innova and you and put something together. Would that be something you guys think you could put together? Of course. I mean, there's all sorts of possibilities with it. Uh, so I, I would love to... You know, play with any other athletes out there. You know, if, if they're disc golf fans, I would, I'd love to, you know, connect with them and play some kind of, whether it's an event or just meet them and, you know, talk disc golf and talk, you know, whatever their sport is because it's always fun and there's so many different backgrounds for disc golf. 
uh, because it, it seems to be it seems to draw a lot of athletes into the sport. Uh, but it's just I would say not as hard on the body. You know, you can do it for your lifetime. A lot of people do it as hobbies, and then they get into it. Like today, I played with Jermaine, college college baseball player. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I don't know how far his career went, but he said he discovered disc golf while playing baseball, and then just switched into it and fell in love with it and stuck with it, and now he's here playing professional. He's got it. That kid's got a, s a slick. What, the forehand, right? Yeah, uh, Thummer. Thummer. That Thummer. Thummer. That yeah. Thummer was crazy. Yeah, I was like watching him. And I asked yeah. him to be my coach because I want to learn how to do that. You it's know? Far, yeah, it's probably the fastest one I've ever seen come out of someone's hand. And the way it turns, it's just a little bit of Yep. Yeah, so, all right, so you're here in Florida. You got anything else planned for Florida while you're here? Yeah, we have uh, McBeast challenges. We have two in Florida, St. Pete on Monday. And That's at Maximo for you guys that are local in uh, Florida. Maximo out by the uh, Sunshine Skyway. Yep. The McBeast challenge. Him, Nate. Is uh, Randy going to be there with you guys? No, uh, he might show up, but he, he's he's not a, a part of it, but he might show up and help out. So, uh, And then we have one on Tuesday in Ocala at, uh, I don't remember the name, but there's only one park there. Pine right. Oaks. Oh, Pine Oaks, yeah, that's it. Pine, Pine Oaks. Pine Oaks, yeah. I played out there. It's a pretty Tuesday. cool course. Yeah. yeah, I remember playing there years ago, years ago. So, um, and then you're Pine going Oaks to Alabama? Tuesday, and then Alabama, yeah, Foley, Alabama on Wednesday, uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana on Thursday, and then we get... A little day off Friday, get to Texas, and then we have uh, the weekend in Texas in like uh, Houston, Austin, Dallas. So those, the weekend and then Monday. So your disc golf uh, player that's the favorite, the guy that you watched grow, other than your father, who you said played. Who's the guy that you watch that you love watching that you kind of maybe looked up to as you were maybe cutting your teeth? Man, looking up to. I mean, there of course the professionals that I saw. On, you know, when you see the magazines and then statistically, it was Climo Berry, um, Avery, Felberg, so the familiar names still now, right. uh, but now I'm playing with them and, you know, they're kind of up in the Masters. I think all of them are now 40 except for Avery, still 39. But uh, I, I saw those guys playing uh, when I was growing up, but the ones that I really learned from were the locals back in Huntington Beach, like Burt McEntee, Kyle Crabtree, uh, Jerry Davis was there, he worked for the Pro Shop. Um, but there, there was a handful of great players in Huntington, you know, mid you know, lower thousand, high nine nineties. But uh, I learned a lot from them growing up. And if you weren't being a disc golfer, if you weren't a pro disc golfer, what would you do? It's hard to say. I mean, I, I don't want to sit at a desk. I can't tell you that. <laughs> Nobody I, does. I'd want to be somewhere active doing something. I don't, I don't know what it'd be. But uh, I, I had a lot of opportunities with other things. But it's just disc golf is where I'm at, and that's where I want to be, and that's where I'm focused at. All right. Well, listen, man. It was great to follow you guys around today. Thanks for letting me and the crew take video of you guys. Uh, it was awesome. Definitely an honor and experience that I won't forget. You know, you know, I like I told you, you know, I work in MMA and I interview the biggest stars in the sport and everything. And interviewing you today is the same level to me because of where you are in the sport. Even if the sport isn't as big as MMA or baseball or football, I'm standing here with the best. So for me, that's an honor, and I'll never forget that. And thanks for taking the time. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, guys. This is Mr. Paul McBeth, world champion. Four times. This year ain't over yet, so probably going to be five. You know, he's got five. He's going to need some rings here soon. But uh, you can follow him on Twitter, straight up Paul underscore Macbeth. Um, the picture on your uh, Twitter is like a soldier. Black and white. Black and white. Is that you? Yeah. It looks like a soldier. Oh. <laughs> so it's a black and white picture, in case you're wondering. Um, Instagram? Yep, that's it. Same thing, Paul yep, Macbeth. Instagram, Are you on Facebook? Facebook? Paul Macbeth? Yep. There yep. you go. So you follow him. Come on out here to the tournament. Uh, you know, I'd like to thank the guys from Sun King Disc Golf here uh, from Sarasota, Florida. They came out here and put in over a thousand man hours to prepare this course. Um, we'd like to thank the folks at Discraft for putting on the tournament, um, Innova for sponsoring this man right here and sending him around the world so we get to talk to him today. So, for Mr. Paul McBeth, I am Christopher James. We'll see you next time. Thanks, brother. I'll get that up a little bit later and uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tag Aspen. I'm gonna, all right, Ben, I got a challenge for you, bro. Yeah, I always thought about it. It would be great, you know.